My Reclaimed Audio podcast partner, Phil Pinsky, loves the Sway Back When series that I do, so this is a special episode just for him, as they, I think they all are. But he had this great idea of, we were talking about like, sort of like changes in our perspectives and on the way we do things, and um, we were talking about shop tours, and so I have years of shop tour videos uh, from even predating the shop that I'm in now, and uh, a lot of things have changed since then. So this is sort of a, a look back at some of the things that I, I had said and did and how they've changed. So I'm doing like a voiceover explaining why maybe I've changed a little bit. Um, so check it out. I hope you enjoy it. I started uh, taking over my wife's garage in 2010, and by 2013, this little one-car garage was chock full of junk. This is not a shop tour. It's a video of me explaining why I tape over all of my labels about not wanting to do advertising in my videos. Um, but you can kind of see some of the shop in there a little bit and some of my my, my poor hair choices. <laughs> but that's one thing that's changed because now I actually do product placement videos. I want to uh, now, tell you that I moved into a new shop. In September of right 2013, the same year, this is a few months later, I moved out of that garage and I moved into my current space. And here you can see I'm explaining the process and showing the raw space. Uh, the idea was to build a shop with everything free uh, found off the side of the road. Those are some cabinets that are donated, an old workbench. And I just sort of go through a tour of the empty space before I started moving in to show and explain uh, the space and what I was going to do. Now I had that, you can see there's no wall in between the two bays there, and um, I learned that first winter that I had to build a wall and insulate it, I was just going to freeze. I put a wood-burning stove in in that corner, it's not there yet, and uh, I just all the heat just, just went right to the other side, so that's why I ended up building that wall and insulating it, keeping my storage separate because it didn't need to stay warm. And so that was a several month long process um, where I just picked up every kitchen cabinet on the side of the road that I saw. And here I am with my son Vance doing the same thing. And then I bring Vance over to the shop because he hadn't seen it yet. Now here we are, buddy. Daddy's shop. First time you've seen it since we brought that first load over, huh? Yeah. How's it look? Good. And I put all on the top, I put these blue plastic boards that I got from Kenny. This is all cork. Do you know what cork is? What is cork? It's a type of tree, and it's uh, it's a sustainable tree. They don't actually cut the tree down to get the cork, like like most would. Um, and this is some old recycled cork flooring. The cork? They peel the tree. They peel the tree. Yep. What else we got? See, I built these shelves, those old doors, and some thrown away cedar There's fence. Water. Those doors that we had stacked up. Maybe I'll try and tell the story of of my shop instead, but we got to start outside to do that. Now, after being in the shop for a year and a half now, I felt like I was kind of settled in, and this is my first um, shop tour. So you can see I have, the premise was that coming from the small shop, I never had enough table space. So the first thing I wanted to do in this big shop was build a giant workbench, and I figured that way I had this big, flexible space to do everything, which has kind of uh, changed over the years. As I get more comfortable with what I'm doing and more knowledgeable about what I want to do, I've sort of taken that big bench concept and I've broken it up more into stations. Like now my metalworking stations separate from my woodworking, and you'll see some more of that later. But up next is an important one. Limitations are very important to me. It's kind of what this whole thing is all about. But in order for things to be handmade, in my opinion, uh, or from the shop, that means I don't use any computer-aided equipment, and I don't use anything that runs on uh, anything above a 110 outlet. Yep, that's right. It was only three years ago that Mr. C&C here said he wouldn't use C&Cs. Uh, I have grown and changed. My perspective has grown and changed. If you do not grow and change, you are stagnant, and what's the point in doing that? Uh, that is something that I try to model my life after. And that's my uh, my shop, my my ever evolving, ever changing shop. It only took me about a year to completely redo everything. I decided that the big bench was not the way to go. I wanted to have my metalworking area separate, and I wanted to have some more open floor space for when I was putting together big dining tables and whatnot. So here, I chopped up that big bench and I made it snake around a little bit. So I have 
more stations and that's still basically the way my shop is now there's been some improvements since then um, when you see my little quick tour at the end I'll get into that a little but since I redesigned my shop um, the one thing I missed was having my giant table for working on projects like this giant nine foot by four foot table this table that I, the way I designed it as a Z um, or an S depending on which way you look at it I guess wasn't quite working sometimes for me as being large enough so I built a wing I built this addition out of just a piece of leftover MDF I cut it to fit here on wheels. So now this extends my table greatly. For instance, if I need to rip stuff or cut stuff, I now have a sawhorse type situation where I can come in and cut. I have a table length this way, which is darn near unlimited. And I have table length this way now. That extra little bench is still a super useful part of my shop. So now here it is another year later and uh, I've started to refine things a little bit more. So I did another shop tour on a beautiful day. Big changes I made to the shop since the last tour were uh, basically painting the walls and making things look a little better on camera, trying to brighten it up. I added some lights, I've organized storage in my spray booth area. Um, and now we're really the shop I'm in today. And here is the current State of the Union today. I don't want to take too much time on this. This is real quick and I didn't clean up for it, but I'm still operating under the same principle of the raw material goes into that bay, which is a total disaster. It gets processed and refined in my workshop. And then I have this finishing bay over here in theory. Uh, it's still a work in progress as well. Uh, and then it goes out the door. So keeping with that theory, and you can go back and see other videos about this stuff. And here, Right in the doorway the material comes in and gets processed so all the big processing machines the joiners and planters and the table saw go here One of the changes over the years is that this table saw is now powered by a 220 line And I'm planning on putting another 220 line in over here to get my welders hotter and maybe get a bigger uh, Planer that I can run off of that same outlet There's my saw horses metal station is still growing a little bit, but still in the same basic area I moved Vance back into the main shop so he wouldn't be freezing in the winter and he could get more use out of his bench, but it takes up some valuable space, but I think it's worth it for the investment in the future. And I still have my big workbench continuing to get divided down. Of course, another huge change is that where I used to be sort of against using computer-aided machinery. Now I can't imagine life without it. So much that I moved the CNC out of the corner and I have this beautiful CNC rider parts machine now right on my main bench. The main reason I put it here is it makes it easier to clean up around it. I can I ran a wire so I can put my computer over there and it doesn't get as dusty. And now I took the area that it was in and I made it another sort of compartmentalized station. Again, getting away from that one giant bench idea. This is where I do my small work. Like as you can see, I have a soldering project going on. I do my tinkering here. And I have some back bench space here because I freed that up when I moved my chop saw down here into the roughing station with the big saws where it makes more sense to be anyways and I don't need that this saw taking up that much space. I use this fence on my table saw if I need to do repetitive cuts and if I need to cut long things I simply pull this stand out into this open space on the floor. It works really well and that gives me plenty more room for tinkering and putting stuff aside to dry and putting tools down. I've loved having this sort of proper mini woodworking bench here. I leave it here all the time now, and I built this jig you can see that I can clamp into it for working on guitars. And that is where my workshop is today. And if you ask me where it's gonna to be tomorrow, I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and let me know also if there's any other sway back when type of things that you would like to see, if you have any ideas for this series. If you have any questions about this particular tour, and I'm going to include a link to a playlist of all my previous shop tours at the end of this video. It might even be on the screen right now. Uh, again, like sharing and subscribing helps a lot, but what really helps is if you want to support this channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash Tim Sway. It's um, super helpful to me. It keeps me able to make content, and it's a lot of fun over there. You get early access to stuff, and we have a little more in-depth discussion sometimes on some things. I post additional content there as well, and sometimes I just give stuff away to random patrons when I make things, um, just because I can, and it's fun. Thank you very much, and be good.